So that was my version of a song called Bulldoze Blues, originally recorded by Henry Thomas, who recorded this in the 20s, and you can find that on this excellent LP, probably reissued on uh, CD, I think. And um, most of you will recognize maybe the melody. Uh, the melody has been used by the rock blues group Kent Heat in 1969 when they recorded their version and they called it um, Going Up the Country. Uh, it's also the song that opens the concert movie of Woodstock in 1969. And the lyrics are different than what uh, Henry Thomas sings. And I chose for an uh, instrumental version. Uh, it is based on a version made by a French guitarist, Alain Giroux, and you can find it on this LP. And I'll put a link in the video description. It's 18 pieces, easy pieces and not so easy pieces. And it comes with a tablature book and you still can find an LP on disc uh, corks. And, but if you buy it, ask the seller if the tablature book is included because sometimes that's not the case. And by the way, Alain Giroux made three LPs in the 70s and you can find those on disc corks as well. And they all came with tablature and they're all uh, instrumental and uh, a nice cover, Alain Giroux was in for a joke. So, okay, let's see at the other side, and you will see a nice guild guitar, the F50 Jumbo guitar. And so all these LPs came with Tamsha books, and he's an excellent arranger and a player, of course. And uh, he's retired now, but you can still find those LPs, and I strongly suggest uh, you search them out if you're interested in finger picking. I did already two lessons uh, on, on songs of him and I also put those links in the video description. Also tap for this song. Uh, I changed it uh, here and there and I added a little section. Uh, the original is played with guitar and he's accompanying himself with quills which is a um, sort of panpipe, small panpipe and that is mounted on a rack. rack. And here in the LP you can see a picture of the quills. Where it is. Here on the side, yeah. That's a quill set made of sugar cane. So um, we're in standard tuning. Our capo is on the fifth fret, and of course, that is the zero fret, so this is the third fret, while it is the eighth fret. And a C chord and an F chord and a G chord are the only chords that are used, so that's pretty easy. And the main purpose of this song is to free up your, your right hand. Uh, most uh, people anchor their hands on the fretboard, or the pickguard in this case, and one or two fingers stay there. And sometimes people have difficulty of, well, freeing their right hand, because in blues sometimes you need to be able to strum chords, and this song is a very good uh, example of that. That's why I recorded it more like that uh, in the beginning, so you can see my right hand very well. Now, Alain Giroux plays it Carter style, and that means that you keep going with the alternating bass, and when you need to do a strum, like for example the third beat and fourth beat in the first measure, he does this. While he picks the temp, the bass note, the fourth string with the temp, he strums downwards with his index and up. So. And so on. I find it not easy and it requires a lot of practice. And I chose the easy way, so I simply strummed down with my two fingers held together. That's the way it works for me, but for some people one finger, or maybe the middle finger, doesn't matter, uh, works best. So do whatever works best for you. I did it like that. And the upstrum is usually only with the index. All right, let's play the song very slowly, uh, the first part. So 
it's important to let the melody notes ring out very well. And the strums are melody notes too. So uh, it's important to let them ring very clearly. And in the first bar you already encountered the first difficulty. When we're playing the C chord in this song, the alternating bass moves between three bass chord strings. Five, four, six, four, five, four, six, four. So that requires some moving and in the second beat you have to move two fingers to get the third beat right. So you move your pinky and your uh, third finger at the same time. Our G chord to our F chord. Oh, sorry, not yet. So you change to the F chord in the fourth bar on the last note. This is played with the pinky. And I'm afraid only the rap uh, with the temp is a um, possible chord. You cannot bar this because then you get, don't have the open first string which is essential here. Bar 10, that's the second most difficult part, I think. Here we have to do a very quick move, and that's why you should not play the song too fast because you're gonna get in trouble here. So the pinky plays the fourth fret, second string, and then quickly shifts to the first fret of the first string, the, sorry, the third fret of the first string, and then the third fret of the second string. And it's important that you relax your uh, left shoulder and your arm and your hand when you play this. You will see that uh, it will become easier because you're going to tense up because it's a difficult part. And um, if you relax, you will be able to play it more easily. Now the original and the Kenneth Heat version are faster. But this determines how fast you can play it. And I don't think the song should be played too fast. Uh, it's a nice instrumental, and especially the second part where we go to Creole bells. Sounds nicer if you play it at a medium tempo. So we've done the first part, we'll end at that bar uh, 11. And in bar 12, I added that section because the quills on the original recording go higher up. And that's what I'm trying to imitate with this. So here's bar 12 and uh, following bars. And then we go back to bar uh, 6. So what are we doing? Open. And when you play that fourth beat of the 12th bar, Play it only once, and you may play uh, in the tab. There's only the bass string, but you can play it a little bit harder so that the third string also rings. And then you slide up. You don't pick when you slide; just one pick, and you slide up like that. And then the pinky does the work on the eighth fret, and then open. And the open notes give you time to go back to that C chord. So, one more time. So, and when we 
play that again. We're only at bar 11, and then we go to uh, bar 17 as introductory bar to uh, Creole Bells, which is, most people know it by the version of uh, Mississippi John Hurt, who plays it slightly different, but this is a nice uh, variation of it. <laughs> So when we go to that uh, in bar 17, notice how I accent uh, to get some dynamics here. And trying to let the melody notes ring out. For example, bar uh, 18, second, third and fourth beats are not really melody notes, so I pl try to play them a bit softer. These are melody notes, so a little bit harder. And bar 20. See that you don't play that first string. The melody note is on the second string, so we don't want that open uh, first string. If necessary, you can tilt your index finger a little bit and uh, mute it uh, while you're playing the second string, first fret. So. Notice how I accent that last beat of the 22nd measure. Not much happening, so if you would play, it's not, well, there's nothing there, so. And then we play bar 25, and you play the notes which are on, in uh, parentheses. So, and when, then we go back to bar uh, 18. So again from that uh, G chord bar 22. second time we don't play the notes in parentheses and I'm really taking care of the last note of bar 24 to play that a little bit harder so it rings into the next bar because we're only playing so if that, if that C note rings and then with that ringing C note well you have a bit more content there And you can end well different ways. What I sometimes do is uh, when we arrive at bar eleven. I'm re retaking, well, uh, starting again at bar 8, and I play that three times, till, till bar 11. So... One more time. between the C and the G. All right, I think that's the most important thing about this song. And of course you can play it longer, you can do the, that section once more and go back to the beginning and play Creole Bell a second time. So you have uh, 
can make the song a bit longer that way. Okay, have fun with it.